I recently bought an 06 Touareg with a 3.2 VR6 for $1,300. The reason it was $1,300 is because the previous owner said the transmission was dead. The transmission wasn't completely dead because I drove it up on the trailer as well as took it on a test drive, but yeah, the previous owner was also kind of right because it shifted terribly. Allegedly, it was at a few shops, got diagnosed as a whole... <coughs> Now, allegedly it had been to a few shops to get diagnosed and nobody was really confident that a valve body would fix it or fluid would fix it. They essentially quoted him an entire box, which is several thousand dollars, far more than the value of the whole entire vehicle itself. I bought the car pretty much because I wanted the VR6 out of it as well as the brakes and the teardown is just the extra bonus. So in this video, we're gonna take this transmission apart like we like to do and see if we can figure out exactly what was wrong with it. Okay, first thing I think we're gonna do is start with the valve body and transmission pan. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna flip this heavy beast over. Oh. Yeah, we're juicing. Oh, she's juicing. Let me dejuicify this. Now I did drain the fluid already, but this is just like an engine. You never actually get all the fluid out. So actually before we start taking stuff apart, a couple things to note. We have the torque converter out, which lives right here. This is where the engine would bolt up. And because this is an all wheel drive vehicle, this is where the transfer case would bolt up. Now that I have it flipped upside down and it is leaked all over my shoe, let's go ahead and take the transmission pan out. I'm gonna get this tray here because we're probably gonna lose some more juice. I did have a bolt break, which is never fun, but we are taking all this apart anyway. So our first check is almost always gonna be to look for metal in the pan. It looks pretty good. There's five magnets. There's the normal goo that gets on these magnets. This Torag had like 130,000 miles, give or take. Let's get the filter off next. You can't really see much inside the filter, but that's okay. We'll just be all right with that. What I have exposed here is the valve body. This is all the electronic solenoids and fluid passages that control all the stuff inside the transmission. Now I know we're talking about a Torag from 2006. This is a basic style automatic transmission. There isn't really a whole lot that is going to be exponentially different about this transmission versus any other style automatic transmission. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of electronicals that we need to deal with. These are the solenoids that control all the goodies. I actually think this little sensor guy uh, was a failure point at one point. I do know that back in 2004, there were a few cases of like exploding solenoids. So you take the pan down and like this would have just exploded. So we got a pretty good size harness here for these solenoids and it is separate, which are what these connectors are for right here at the back. Next, I'm gonna take these bolts out and we're gonna take our valve body out, which is this piece right here. Also, I'm probably gonna end up taking out more bolts than I should. If you're doing this as part of a service or something, like replacing the valve body or whatever, follow the repair manual. Don't just run all the bolts out. You're probably gonna take some stuff out that you shouldn't. Then you're gonna be mad because the whole thing's gonna come apart. Instead of being nice and fun, it's gonna be a nightmare. Valve body is unbolted. And move it over here like that. Now that exposes our drums inside of our transmission. And you can see the rod move for our gear selector. We got a, probably a speed sensor here. Get this little boy off. Actually, I think that's a 12. Oh, this is an Eisen transmission. So of course it would be a 12. Now, before I stand this transmission up for us to take the guts out, I think I'm gonna unbolt the bell housing and get it out of the way. Okay, that's all the bolts. Let's see if we can get this bell housing off. I guess I should have taken the bolts out first. All right. Ugh. Ugh. Would you just look at it? This is definitely properly secured on here. Let's take this cover off next. This is likely the transmission fluid pump. And with any luck, this will come off reasonably easy. Sometimes these require you to thread a bolt in. Let's see what happens with this one. Oh yeah, that didn't work at all. Well, good thing we're not going back together with this. Uh-oh, but I got it out. Ta-da, oh geez. 
speed sensor right there, that yellow bit. With that removed, it exposes our first clutch pack and drum. I'm actually gonna try and lift this all out. Nope, not all coming out at once. Try and do our clutch, our outer pack first. So this, we have steel discs as well as our friction discs. <laughs> I don't wanna give it away already, but one of these steel bands is absolutely smoked. Look at all these dark spots. That is from slipping, basically, and overheating. So that likely, one of the causes are problems right there. Now, even though the steel discs and clutch packs here are absolutely smoked, don't go. We might actually have more problems. And a little later in the video, we're gonna talk about exactly how all this stuff works. It is important to note that we didn't really have any fault codes stored, which is not uncommon. <laughs> even, the, <laughs> even this guy looks like it got hot spotted. Now I should be able to pull this whole drum out, this guy. So that's one set. And then we have a lower drum. Let's see how this comes out. There's clutch pack there with a drum. Good thing this isn't going back together. I think the easiest way to handle this is to finish pulling out the guts. I'm gonna set them down here and then we'll go through them once I do that. Part of me wants to just puke them all out onto the table. That's not out of the question just yet, by the way. There's also some parts that I'm likely not gonna show, like this wavy washer right here, which is pretty cool. Oh, oh yeah, look at this guy. Ugh, it's heavy. It's heavy, so that is like that. And then we got a whole bunch of clutches in here. I'm trying to pull these out in their respective groups. These look much better than the first ones that I pulled out. Oh, look at this. Oh yeah. All right, right here, our final basket. This is the shaft that mates with the transfer case. We have everything out, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up and I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna show you what I found and then I'm gonna show you how all this stuff actually works. All right, so on the bench here, this is the main guts of our transmission. Now the case also does play a pretty important role to all these things <laughs> beyond holding it all in place and keeping our fluids in. Of course, there's a number of different pieces to this whole automatic voodoo transmission puzzle, but here's some things that we know. We have a couple of different styles of discs. The first one is a steel disc, which is this one right here. It is a disc made of steel, and you'll also notice that it has these pieces on the outside. These bits that are sticking up right here, almost like a cog would be, spline to the case of the transmission. This should be in a fixed place, just like that. We also have friction discs, which is this disc right here, which has a small layer of friction, which is why it's called a friction disc. You'll notice this one is toothed or splined on the inside. What this one does is it attaches to this drum right here. It doesn't really matter which one of these pieces we're talking about, it all kind of works the same. This piece here, when it's installed, can't spin or rotate independent from this piece. When we add those together, or a stack of them more accurately, we have a piece spline to the case in our steel disc, and we have a piece spline to the drum in our friction disc. Okay, so big deal, why is that important? That allows the transmission to do what it's supposed to do. This means we can have rotation of our input shaft, which is this piece right here. We can have rotation of the whole entire thing, like this, depending on where our fluid pressure is applied. When fluid pressure is applied, it squashes that all down, locks the drum into place. So essentially this drum, this piece right here, is locked to our transmission case, allowing only this input shaft piece to turn. Because our steel discs are annihilated and hot spotted, our friction discs look just absolutely horrible. So this friction disc is out of our B1. This piece right here is our first break. This is what a nice, not new, but a little bit more freshy one looks like. Nice and uh, like an amberish gold color. And this is black and burnt and yucked. And that's corresponding to these hot spots on the steel disc. So what likely happened is some sort of fluid starvation to this first brake. Now this brake will hold this drum in second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear, which is why this thing had such bad shifts through multiple gears going up the range and back down. Because when this drum right here was supposed to be locked and held in place, 
essentially fixed to the case, it wasn't. Should have just been input shaft turning. We had this outer barrel turning at some rate. What rate? I have no idea. Could we have figured that out? Maybe, uh, but we didn't, <laughs> but we didn't. That's why this transmission shifted so poorly. Now, what caused that fluid starvation? We don't know. Low fluid, bad solenoid, clogged up, but I'm hyped that we actually found a problem. Some of these teardowns that we've done, we've pulled a whole engine apart and didn't find any smoking gun. In this case, we have found the smoking gun, or I guess more accurately, the smoking clutch for our first brake B1. I did some very initial kind of estimating on could we fix this? Yes, this is fixable. Everything else we took apart looks okay. So could we put a new clutch and steel disc set for brake one in this transmission? Absolutely, we could. You saw kind of what the teardown it would take to get to. This is our first piece in line. So we wouldn't have had to go this deep. Just to pull the engine and transmission out of this car, not to do anything internal of the transmission is like 14 or 15 hours at minimum. With that kind of labor time, you're looking at $3,000, give or take, depending on what the labor rate is, any, anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000. And that is exactly no parts, not opening up the transmission on a car that if it were perfect, which here's what this one looked like, definitely not perfect, probably worth about three grand altogether anyway. If it was perfect, maybe five, but that's, oh boy, a stretch. Here are some other bits. We got some gears in here. This is our simple planetary gear set right here. This little drum piece too, you can kind of see is pretty hot spotted. Probably a cascading effect from uh, the brake, the B1 failure. We have another clutch pack here inside of this guy, which is splined with this, which is splined with this, which hooks to this, which then goes, this whole unit goes into this. That, my friends, is the voodoo of an automatic transmission. So here's a simple way to think about it. Depending on what's trying to happen inside the transmission, most of these parts are either spinning, holding, or locked to another piece in the puzzle. So depending on how that is set up, you could create a four speed, a five speed, a six speed, a seven speed. My 2015 TDI Touareg is an eight speed transmission, and that's not even that revolutionary. I think we got plenty of automatics running around with 10 speed transmissions. It's really all on how things are held or not held, allowed to spin or not spin. We'll create however many gears the transmission has. All right, hopefully the voodoo and witchcraft that is automatic transmissions is somewhat demystified anyway. I'm pretty hyped that we found the actual problem causing the shifting concern. And uh, I feel better that had they just put a valve body in it, it wouldn't have fixed it. So I'm glad they didn't do that. Here's what I need from you though. Let me know what other engines or transmissions should I try and find so we can do super fun teardowns. Also be on the lookout for that Toreg video where we gut the VR6 out of it, take the brakes and a couple of other things. It's pretty fun and we found some gross stuff. With that, I'm out, have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time.